Hello, everybody. Good morning and welcome to my live stream. Today, uh, we're doing something a little bit different today. I'll be using an Arbitec Turbo Plane. So this is my first venture into power carving. Quite excited to share it with you. Very, very new to this. It is very fast um, to remove timber. Can be a little bit intimidating. I am going to try and go quite quick today because we've got a lot to get through and I don't want to make this a three hour long <laughs> video but as always if you have questions please pop them in the chat hopefully I'll get round to them um so we're using Arbitec Turbo Plane and with that we will be making a little flish flish a little fish platter or shallow bowl you can see that's only 25 mils thick. Ah, good morning, Simone. Thank you for tuning in as always. And hello to everybody else that's tuning in now. So we're going to be carving this today, roughing out with the turbo plane and then finishing off with hand tools. So to get started, now this is unplugged whilst I <laughs> touch all the blades lock. So this wheel here, that's the turbo plane. That's attached just into a regular angle grinder. You can put get the official like Arbitec attachment, but I don't have that. And it's got these three blades and as it spins, it shaves away. Now, if you use that at the correct angle against your timber, I think unlike kind of the bird um, power carving tools, this will actually give you little flakes. But if you go kind of the wrong way, it will give you sort of gritty, dusty stuff. So there's that. But as always, when you're using power equipment, lots of safety stuff to get through. Just let me plug this angle grinder in now. So I'm gonna do a demo, a quick shot for you on a piece of plain pine, and then we will be carving the actual fish. So. Lots and lots of safety equipment. So get ready for this. First thing, you want a respirator. This is new. This is a 3M respirator, and you can actually hear me through it, I hope. Um, a lot of respirators, you can't hear people when they talk, so that's good. And I have a bit of a bad neck, so I really like this one because it's very, very light on my face. I don't like the things with the big canisters that kind of weigh you down like that. So... Respirator on. Next, you need your safety glasses. This is super important when using this tool. These are also 3M ones. You can see they're actually like, oh, you can hear me. Yes. So glad. Um, they're actually like ski goggles. I used to use the like traditional style, but stuff can fly up and under those, whereas these fit really snug to your face. So next you want to put your goggles on. Goggles on. Earmuffs, because it's going to get very noisy. You can hardly even see me now. And lastly, I always like to wear gloves because they flick off little bits that can just sort of, they don't cut you, but all the shards of timber can just really kind of sting the back of your hands I found and I like slim fitting gloves and I cut the fingers off for carving get my sleeves out the way you can probably hear me my very loud breathing through this as well so sorry for that <laughs> But there you go. Oh, I probably do sound like I'm on Star Wars. Goodness, I feel like an alien right now, that's for sure. So I'm going to tilt this down and show you. This is just a piece of pine. So I've got the grain running this way. This is in, this is in securely into my grinder. I'm all plugged in. As I cut across the grain, you should see I should get flakes. As I come along the grain, I'm going to get grit. So I'll just show you an example of that. So 
So as you can see, maybe you can't see, cutting across has given me a very smooth finish. As I'm coming along the grain, it's ripped it a bit. See, when I cut across, I'm getting shards like that. And when I come along the grain, I'm getting that. So that's just how the tool works best, cutting across, but you can't always do what works best, as we all know. So I'm gonna unclamp this. Also, when you're doing any carving, but especially power carving, it is really, really important to clamp, clamp your work very securely. Because tools can, can grab and bite and flick on you. And the last thing you want is your work taking off as well. So I just cut this fish out on the bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, you could use a coping saw. Very simple shape. I'm gonna hollow out this section using the turbo plane. And then we're gonna be taking over hand carving where I definitely do feel a bit more comfortable. So securely clamping this down. Really, really tightening that more than I would if I was hand carving. Okay. Oh, I don't know if I said this is American walnut. It's beautiful for carving by hand. As you can see, it's got a few knots in it, which by hand would give you a bit of issue, but this will just carve straight through those. Go. You can see I'm getting some depth carved away. I'm going to go a bit deeper. You can see I've got a bit to play with there. And you can see where I'm coming across that grain, it's leaving me almost a finished finish there. Whereas when I'm coming across, it's getting a bit fuzzy. Now I can see we've got some questions coming in, but I will get to those once I've finished this bit of... Uh, power carving and I can take all this gear off and talk a little easier.
Oh, we've got Queenslanders who've got about daylight savings. Yeah, it makes it a little bit uh, tricky, doesn't it? But I'm glad you could make it, Roderick. Just unclamping this fish. So you can see I've got a little bit of depth there. 25 mil thick timber. I've probably gone about down about 10 mils. I could keep going deeper. Um, and honestly, if I wasn't time pressure on the live stream, I probably would. But I think for us today, that's good. And you can see, because you can get the um, the carving wheels with like a bird head, but they kind of really rip the timber and will give you a really rough, rough result. But that is quite smooth. And when I get more practiced, that will be even smoother. But I'm going to flip this down and now we're going to tackle this little fish with some hand tools. Okay. Just taking my gloves off. But it does make a mess. The edges of my bench are covered in this. And it's flown about two or three metres away. Oh, what was that? Oh, it's my clamp. Gave me a fright. But you can see how quick that was to remove that. Far quicker than if I had um, attempted it entirely by hand. So as I said, I've only really recently discovered them, um, but I think I might keep going because that's phenomenal, just that waste removal that really has no kind of finesse to it. Um, it's nice to just sort of dig it away quickly. So next, this is a veal carving gouge. You see the, the that shape in that? That is a spoon bent gouge. It's a feel uh, number 5L. The L means it's bent like that, uh, 25 mils wide. So coming at it, their spoon bent gouges are great for like carving in hollows because I can sort of go like this. So now I'm just going to really neaten up. And what I'm doing is I'm coming across, so you can see now I've hit one of those knots. 
that the Arbitec dealt with really smoothly and didn't tear out, but now I've got to really kind of slowly and carefully work it away. So I'm trying to just coming across, trying to get all the high points out of the way first. But if you have a look at um, their YouTube channel, you'll see people who've been using the tools for a lot longer than me and getting some really, really great results. I am just going to finish this fish off by hand. Now, I can't remember if I mentioned, but um, why well, I chose to do this little project for you today. I've had quite a few people message me saying, could we do something that could be Christmas gifts, like simple little Christmas gifts? Um, and I thought this would be a, it's not a very difficult project. You can make it as fancy or as simple as you like. You can make 20 and give them to everyone for your Christmas presents if you like. Obviously, you can use much thicker timber and go much deeper. Now, see here, I'm struggling because I don't have the space to really, like I always tell you, the ball of my hand rested on my work there. So I'm kind of slipping. So in this situation, I'll just tilt this up slightly so you can see my hips. I'm going to lock my elbow into my hip and use that to stabilise myself. And it's not as good as getting your ball, ball of your hand on the work, but it is the next best option. Just want to come right up to this texture line. through a tough bit. Doing quite short chunks here because I'm actually cutting across that end grain there. But yeah, if anybody else ends up using these, don't let your lovely sharp tools touch your metal clamps. Anybody else ends up using um, one of these turbo planes, please let me know how you go. And if you have any tips or tricks, I'd really welcome hearing those, please. But you can see this live stream's only been going for like 15 minutes. Now, and already we're on to the finalising where it's about to do this solely by hand. We wouldn't be so far progressed yet. So I am enjoying the time saving powers that it offers. Just taking away that textile line. always that wiggle is for when you're in a tough bit of grain each wiggle is a new slice now I think I would actually the number five on this tool here I always say so the five results for that sweep there I think I'd actually be finding this easier with the number seven. So something just a bit more U-shaped. Oh, here's a seven. So you can see how much more curved that is than that one. 
And I think if this was a 7L25, it would just dig in that little bit more. And make this a fractionally faster job. Mask out the way. You see that gorgeous gloss in there? That's when you're at optimum cutting and you're also polishing the timber with your blade. Now, something I don't think I mentioned, when using this, I didn't use it flat like that. I used it up. You don't want multiples of these teeth, in my experience, digging in at once, otherwise it can sort of kick and grab. Working my way through that knot. I think I might need to get the mallet on this little bit at the end here. Now at this stage, I'm not really worrying what direction my cuts are going in. I'm just trying to sort of roughly smooth out the base here. And then we're gonna do some patterning, which will just save us the extra carving work. Just gonna flip this around. See that? We're getting smooth and getting some nice texture from the tool in there. Slicing it through here. Again, I can't I can't rest my all of my hands, so I'm using my forearm on the clamp. Can hear how well this is cutting it sounds beautiful to me nope still got to go left-handed to get around this corner mallet time I'm anchoring off the clamp here this time.
we go. So I have roughly smoothed that out. You can see it's still got quite a few facets in there. I personally really like uh, the tool marks and the facets, but it's nice, I think, to always make them look deliberate. So this is another spoon bent guard. You can see it goes like that. It's a number 8L10, so 10 millimetres wide. The sweep or that curve there is a number 8. What I'm going to try and do is run a pattern of stripes through here. Now, this is going to be quite tricky because I'm going to be coming at different grain um, directions the whole way around this circle. Smooshed shaped circle, I should say. I'm going to give it a rough centre point. And I'll start with my easiest cuts. So this will just be making it look like I deliberately want tool marks in here and just giving a bit more interest to it. So I'm starting at the edge and I'm going to have my cuts blending in towards that centre point. Get a high point there, I didn't smooth out very well. You can see as I'm, it's working great down the hill, and then as I'm coming here, I'm pushing my back hand down too much and because it's rounded, it's sort of just like skidding off on the back of the tool there. So I need to remind myself to hold it slightly more upright. Ah, oh, how better did that work? Again, lots of wiggles to get through that chunk. You can probably just see that it's quite subtle. I'm going to get carving if I want to make it the whole way around this fish. And if you want to learn anything about um, grain control and direction, this would actually be a great exercise because you're going to come at it from every possible angle. Working with the grain, I need better control and more strength through here. Now, luckily, I'm not going for perfect uh, lines. Otherwise, I'd have had to get a compass and a protractor out. So, as I'm working my way through this really tough bit of grain here, which isn't surprising because I've got a knot here and here and the tiniest one there, and I'm right in the middle of that triangle. I'm just going to go for lots of short bits all going in the right direction. Like I said before, I'm going to go really hard and fast on this to try and get finished. You doing this at home, please take more time and care than I am. Again, locking into my hip here. See that? Nice little pattern, about a quarter of the way through. There's a knot, so I'm, I want to slice through it instead of trying to power through it, so I'm lots of little slices to get through that. If you're really smart, you could probably um, put a knot where the eye of the fish should be, which I did not think of.
What's really nice is every one of these little grooves will catch the light slightly differently. The actual tricky thing is trying to keep them all the same depth. These spoon bent gouges are also great for relief carving because you can sort of get in little areas that might be a bit tricky otherwise. Again, that tough bit of grain. This little knot is giving me so much grief and it's the smallest one. When you do this at home, you might even want to put a top fin on your fish. Could be nice. Done half. I'm going to spin that around. Hello. We're getting quite a nice pattern on the top half there. It's looking very deliberate. I personally love the tool marks. I think it's a lot more interesting and cut to the light a lot more than if I was to try and sand that perfectly smooth. Spin around. Ah, oh, hi Jenny. Thanks for joining. Yes, we had a few people um, get a bit confused by the daylight savings time. Sorry, I'm just struggling with this little nice clamp here. As you can see on the ground behind me, it will it will make a mess <laughs> of your workshop. But if it's nice weather. Lovely to do outside, and then you're just pre mulching uh, the garden. So, two birds with one stone there. Keep this pattern going. See how I'm really twisting that tool? So, I don't know if you can see the light's not great. Really twisting that to try and I'm having trouble where this flattens out at the bottom and also it's where I've got this horrific triangle of knots. None of it's adding up for smooth carving. Terrible angle on that line there. I've forgotten where I'm trying to send them all. I've got a massive ridge just up here, so I'm just going to remove that a little bit. Otherwise, I think I'll battle with that every time with the small guard.
we'll have to get that started. It's very repetitive, so I'm really running out of things to say. So if anyone had questions, now would be the, the time. Or if not, don't bother. We can just all do this in silence. Oh, one thing I will say is when using the uh, turbo plane. Now, this walnut is a nice, really nice wood for carving by hand, um, but you can also use it on timbers that are not the nicest for hand carving. It will work really well on those as well. So it kind of opens up your opportunities a bit. I think I think they're made in um Perth, which is cool. Nearly got my whole way around this fish. we go. Let me unclamp that for you. See, we've got that lovely pattern the whole way through. I've got a dag there. Get rid of that. And that just makes it all look a bit more intentional. Um, yeah, and I just, I, I really love patterning. You go it's nice when the light bounces off that and obviously do take your time a little bit longer than I did and get those a little bit neater and I think you'll get even better results now I'm going to just add a little bit of shape to the tail not much at all I don't want to get too carried away because I'm going to be using the Arbitec again so I'll clamp this back up The reason I didn't carve the tail to begin with is because I wanted it to clamp with. Now, because I you have to have two clamps on, I'm obviously not going to be able to get a clamp in this dip. So now I've just got a block. It's a far bigger block than needed, but it will do the job. Cool. So I'm just going to shape this a little bit. I might as well let you watch me put all the <laughs> safety equipment on for people who miss the beginning. Oh, I've got a few more questions. What is the wood that you're using? Hi, Ken. Um, today I'm using American walnut. It's a lovely hand carving wood, so you can carve it really nicely by hand. You can get a lot of detail in it and as you can see it does also take to power carving really well 
Ah, thank you, David. Yeah, the tooling markers are nice, I suppose. So important thing, dust mask on. Still on process. Those of you who are late, you'll get seen looking like an alien for the first time. Everybody else, this is your second treat. This style of 3M goggle is great because they fit to your face and you can't get stuff up and under. Earmuffs because it's very loud. And I always like to wear gloves. Twist this down. Thanks, David. That clears it up a bit more. Thank you. Oh, it's stuck in my hair. Oh. Go look at that. So it's better than breathing in a mouthful of the dust, isn't it? If I take that mask on and off a few more times, people think I've been outside in a tornado. Gloves off. And I'll just show you what I did to the tail. Uh, is keeping the Arbitech Sharp an issue? I haven't had it long enough to tell you the answer to that, uh, Roderick. I hope it's not an issue. Either on their website or on their YouTube, though, they I think they have a video of how to sharpen it. I have seen a video of how to sharpen it and it looks relatively easy. So I think that should be fine. I'm just gonna tilt this down. Yes, yeah, so I think sharpening it shouldn't be too difficult when the time comes, we hope. See, I just got I really wanted to kick one tail up, but I thought that could be very sharp. So I just got a little bit of shape happening there. Something a bit more interesting. Trying to figure out which way to clamp this. This way, I think. If I'm hand carving, I might try and get away with just one clamp here. It's got a bit of bounce. I won't get away with one clamp. Okay. Let's position that. So if you ever watch one of my live streams before, You'll see that I nearly always use 3F20. F means it's fishtail, which means it goes out like that. You're really good for getting into spots. I'm just gonna come along here and remove a little bit of that, tiny bit of that chewing I got. I have 
Can you see that? Where I'm really digging that there. There's a tiny knot. I'm going to use a 7F because that's got a bit more of a scoop to it. I might be able to slice my way through that a bit easier. There we go. Might as well just keep using this one. Now I've got it going. Coming at a stupid angle for this. I've kind of had enough of clamping and unclamping today. Yeah, and I'm deliberately leaving a little bit of texture in this tail. not done yet now you nearly always want to carve downhill if you've got a slope very occasionally you might find yourself going uphill but in general terms downhill is the way to go hmm should I join these to this that is the tricky question. I think I won't today, but I might think about it. Here, I have to come uphill because I need to slice off the ends of all of those grains. So that is your rare opportunity for carving uphill. Yeah, so in this tail, Ah, Simone, do I ever use quick release clamps? I've found, I do have a couple of um, quick grip clamps. I usually use them when I wish I had somebody else around to hold something whilst I got bigger clamps into position. Um, I found once you start using them a lot, they will sort of wiggle around on you and release themselves. Um, is my experience of those. So if I'm going to be doing anything, definitely anything with a mallet, I would use um, proper, proper clamps. So I've just drawn some lines here on the tail just to make it look a little bit different from the body of our fish. Got a large beetle anchoring ball of my hand on that fish. So I can't get that uphill, but look at that. I just did it. That is amazing. Tilting my tool down, crossing my fingers, I can make it up that hill. I'm only getting away with this um, because this is such nice carving wood. Normally, in a lot of timbers, you wouldn't be able to do that. Got some stripes there. Do a few more on this other side. Oops. That's because I didn't anchor well enough. I was letting too much pressure be in the swap to anchoring in my hip which I don't think you can see one two three four 
four, so we should probably do four on this side. Okay, let me unclamp this probably for the last time. I think Simone, I actually just need an assistant. That would be far easier, wouldn't it? Here you have it. Very simple fish platter. Yeah. <laughs> Extra hands would be a nice idea, wouldn't they? Um, as you can see, I've not done the edges. I'm not going to bother, otherwise this live stream will never end. But we could turn it. Actually, you know what? Let's turn it upside down and just do a quick with the Arbitec just to give it the roughest bit of shape here so you can see what I'm talking about. Be a very long live stream. Let's put that back down. I wasn't done clamping, my goodness. I'll just do around the front of the face for you. You've kind of got to keep a visual map of how much um put my safety gear on in, how much you took away on your top side when you do something like this. Just getting everything on again. Just a little bit of rounding here. Take all this off again. Just start to feel a little bit repetitive. Yeah, I just really quickly took off a little bit there. So when it sits, it has a little bit more depth. Now I think um, hopefully if anyone wants to make their own, take a little bit more time and you could bring that really close up around here. Don't come very far back this way because you still want it to be quite flat so it can sit. If you just pull that up a little higher, I think that'll look really nice. I was running into issues. I should have done it. So this was hanging with my arms the table. I was carving it. My arm is the table edge off the edge of the table, whereas I was on. So I was going to hit the cutting blade. It was If I went any deeper, it was going to be hitting this and my workbench, um, which not only would have put a hole in my workbench, the tool probably would have grabbed and jerked around a bit. But there you have a really fun little cute fish bowl. I've done this probably a bit faster than it deserves um, to try and squeeze it into a live stream session. Hopefully you do make your own, take a little bit more time and effort. And I'd love to see your results. You can share them with me via my Instagram at Olivia O'Connor carving or on Facebook you can find me Olivia O'Connor carving my website is oliviaoconnor.com.au 
uh, please do like this video and subscribe to the Carver Tech YouTube channel. And then that way we can keep these fun little videos happening. Next month, there will also be a little trinkety sort of thing you can make as Christmas gifts. I'm very sorry to those of you who don't want to think about it that I've started <laughs> in October, but I thought I'd better give people time if they do like the idea and do want to try um, making some of their own. So I think seeing how fast this turboplane blade is at removing excess, like if we'd done this by hand, there's no way I would have been able to get to this stage um, in under an hour. But thank you to all of you who joined today. We just got a couple of last questions. So would you sand that underneath part after shaping with the turboplane? Yeah, I think you could, Simone, probably sand that, sand that back um, really nicely. And then just if you just put some oil on it, like some organ oil or something, that'll just go such a beautiful glossy colour and be really, really lovely. Ah, holding this way around so he's smiling. Um, but, yeah, there you go. Another question. I'll have to hunt out my turboplane again. Haven't been very successful with it, but give it another go. Yeah, have, have a really gentle play of it. I was a bit intimidated and daunted when I first got it because it is, it is fast. <laughs> like it spins really fast and it is very noisy and I think the fear of something going wrong. Um, but also other little tips is like, like any power equipment, like no loose clothing. I think it's a good tip to have a really like high shirt because all those shavings flicking down your top can get a bit uncomfortable. Oh, thank you very much. Linda, that's lovely. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And one from Ken, first time watching carving. Oh, really? Thanks, Ken. Well, it was a pleasure having you. I hope you join us next month where we will be doing more carving yet again. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to wrap off now, wrap off, sign off. I don't know how to say that. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend. Happy fish carving. And please send me photos of how you go. That'd be really fun to see. Thanks, everyone. All right. Goodbye.